Nearly 100 cars will attempt to make it all the way across America. With one of the world's most famous buildings as a backdrop, Brian Gooch, better known as Motormouth, stands at the starting line not far from the steps of the U.S. Capitol. The defending champions are the first to begin a new adventure across America. It doesn't take long before the racers are transported back to small town America, a place where most of these cars seem right at home. The cars leave Washington, D.C. and head for the Shenandoah National Park. Today's course, with only three turns, will test the driver's ability to maintain constant speed. They have no maps, no GPS, only a set of course instructions, stopwatches, and navigators who will watch for road signs and landmarks that tell them when they need to change speeds and make turns. The goal is to come as close as possible to a predetermined perfect time for each section of the race. If they follow the course instructions perfectly, they would have a score of zero. A score of 10 seconds means the car is either 10 seconds early or late arriving at a checkpoint. There are daily winners at the end of each stage, but at the end of the race, all the scores will be added together, and the team with the lowest cumulative score will be crowned the grand champion. The cars travel along Skyline Drive, following the crest of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and through one of the eastern United States' most dramatic tunnels bored through solid rock. This winding road provides panoramic views of the Shenandoah River and abundant wildlife. The great race is based on timing and endurance rather than high speeds, but for some reason, not all lawmen can understand a race that isn't about going fast. The day finishes in Harrisonburg, West Virginia with a great crowd. The great race crew helps get the cars parked and the drivers finally get a chance to relax. The great race crew helps get the cars parked and the drivers finally get a chance to relax. <laughs> Once the cars are parked, the support crews start detailing the cars and any necessary engine adjustments are made. The teams get a chance to talk and exchange stories from the first day. Captain Greg Galligan and Captain John Eisberg of the National Guard have a good one.
day one is just the beginning for cars like the Sharp's 1910 Geely. They're determined to keep this classic in the race. Here are the results for stage one. In first place, the team of Hersey and McDoor driving a 1934 Ford Indy Racer, finishing with a time of six seconds. In second place, also with a time of six seconds, is the team of Cook and Seacrest in their 1951 Chevrolet two-door sedan. In third place is Jeff and Karen Stump, Lang and Sickbert in fourth, and Corky and Teresa Coker in fifth place. 